Hi, Kerry here from My Cloud Bookkeeping. The number one reason people are reaching out to me for help is still because they've duplicated transactions. They've entered things twice from the bank feed. The bank balance compared to QuickBooks is way off and their results are completely wrong. I've addressed the matching of expenses from the bank feed in a previous video. Um, the link's just there. <laughs> so this time I'm going to look at how to match deposits. There'll be a checklist download. You can grab it now and follow through or download it for later and use it so you know what you're doing when I'm not around. Now, because this is so common and so many of you have duplicated transactions and it's really messy to try to correct, I'm working on whether it's going to be an ebook or a video course or something that I can provide so that you've got a way to step by step work through how to resolve it because it's not always easy and it's not always fun, quite frankly, but we'll make it as fun as we can. <laughs> so be sure to subscribe, uh, join Facebook group. Maybe I don't have many people on there. I don't do a lot there, but you know, find a way to keep track. And if you've got these duplicated transactions and you want to try to fix them by yourself, I'm going to try and find a way to help you to do that. So keep an eye out, hopefully in the next week or so. Um, right now we're in the middle of the coronavirus. So hopefully you're watching this from the other end and thinking, oh, I've forgotten about that. But right now we're in the middle of it. So I've got lots of time to make new content, new videos. I'm going to say it at the end as well. Let me know if there's anything else you want to know. But uh, yeah, let's go and match some transactions on the bank feed. Here we are in the sample company. I'm going to walk through the sales process first and show you what happens in your books when you record certain transactions. Firstly, let's consider if someone is paying you here and now, or if you'll be issuing an invoice and they'll pay you later. If you're receiving funds now, you use a sales receipt. Enter your customer or, or choose your customer from the list. Check the date. Enter the payment method. Um, oops, so you pay by check. We're putting it into the checking account and then we'll sell them something. Let's say he's buying some entertainment for $480 with no tax. We don't want to be messing around with tax right now. Okay, so then we save and close that. Now, if we're selling something to somebody who'll be paying later, we prepare an invoice. So we'll pop to the invoice. Make sure we've got our customer. We'll choose a different customer this time. Who we choose? Here we go. Uh, once again, check the date, information, choose what you're selling. Choose something different this time. I don't know, a platinum party maybe. $1,800. No sales tax and then save and send. Now, of course, this one's not going to send because we're in the sample company. So we'll just save it. Now, the next step would be the payment from the customer. And here's where it gets a little interesting. You can wait for the deposit to come into the bank and match it, which is what we're going to do now. So now let's go to the bank feed. We can see here our sales receipt from Benjamin Young has matched perfectly with the amount that's coming from the bank feed. So we're going to match this right now. Now this amount here, the invoice for $1,800 has come in. We can match this, that's the payment for the invoice. So let's go ahead and we'll click match. There's also another way to do it. What we can do is we can unmatch this, pop it back onto the bank feed, here it is, and actually go and receive the payment from the customer first. So we'll pop up to here and we'll say receive payment. Choose our customer. I don't know. I've changed the date to, to coincide with bank feed dates. So if you're noticing a date change, that's what's going on here. We're going to select this invoice and we're going to save and close. So now when we come back to the bank feed, notice that this is matched to the payment and not to the invoices that did before. And this is correct. Now, occasionally this is something that goes wrong. I think QuickBooks has fixed it now, but if you haven't recorded a payment, it's okay to match to the invoice. If you have recorded a payment, you need to always match to the payment. So because we know that this is the amount of the payment, it's from the same customer, it's correct. We're just gonna hit match. Now here we have a transaction deposit that doesn't have a suggested match. And a common error I see is that somebody will look at this and they'll go, oh, I know who this is from. And they'll go, okay, yeah, this was some sale. Let's have a look in here, sales. 
here it is and this is the right customer and they click add and they record the sale into their books now that's fine if you hadn't already recorded the sale somewhere else so if you hadn't recorded a sales receipt or an invoice um, various reasons why things might not match that I'll, I'll go over later but you occasionally this is what happens so before we add anything we're going to pop in here and we're going to go find match and we're going to see perhaps if we have already recorded it and you know what perhaps we know that this 8760 here relates to a partial payment for this 15,000 for shutters consultants if that's the case we can apply this 8760 as a part payment and save it so by doing this we've allocated that payment to the correct invoice if we had added the 8760 and not applied it to the invoice we would have increased our sales by $8,760 and we would have thought the charter still owed us $15,000 and this is what goes wrong when you're not really careful working with the bank feed now if you're absolutely certain that a transaction on the bank feed has not been entered before go ahead choose the category and add away some of the reasons transactions may not match are if the amount is slightly different perhaps your customer didn't pay the correct amount due to a sales tax error or a rounding error maybe you recorded the transaction to the wrong bank account and which is really easy to fix if you catch it also if you have a backlog of transactions sometimes I find the matching function doesn't work so well a really good reason to keep on top of your bank feed and your bookkeeping now if you have multiple transactions in one deposit doesn't always correctly match them all and sometimes foreign currency amounts won't match properly so here's where the importance of regular bank reconciliations really does come in if you're reconciling regularly you'll be able to catch this quickly <laughs> so download the checklist walk through it when you're recording your transactions I might make another video about combining multiple payments into one deposit using the undeposited funds account it seems to be another thing that people are having some challenges with if that'll be useful let me know comment below join the Facebook group whatever works for you be sure to subscribe to my channel so I can keep you in the loop when I find a way to show you how to fix those duplicated transactions it's a little more work than a simple how-to video I'm afraid but we'll, we'll get there if you have any questions if there's anything else you'd like to know just reach out don't hesitate to contact me comment below my next video could be for you cheers